All right, so here are my thoughts on Nutcracker Fantasy. So this is a Japanese stop-motion film. It is animated in the style of um, Rankin Bass's uh, stop-motion puppet animations. So, yeah, you, you see the characters, like, um, yeah, the characters look a lot like Rankin Bass characters, so yeah, it's easy to mistake it for Rankin Bass. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the, the studio that actually did it was, uh, Sanrio, yeah, Japanese, uh, yeah, Japanese anime company. Um, let's see. Um, and it, was also apparently remastered in 2014, so yeah, the <clears throat> yeah the version I watched might have been the remastered version. Not sure. I mean, I can't really make any comparisons, but uh, anyway, um, so the story is, or I mean, naturally this is based on the Nutcracker, so. Uh, or yeah, rather loosely, but, uh, you know, it's got some of the, or yeah, it's got quite a few of the elements, like, you know, um, I do believe in the original Nutcracker story, the main girl is named Clara, <clears throat> so yeah, we have, uh, Clara, who, um, yeah, it starts with her t telling this, uh, creepy little story about the ragman who, like, you know, turns, or yeah, children who uh, stay up past their bedtime, he comes to their house and turns them um, into mice. And yeah, that's uh, an interesting way to start the movie. Um, doesn't seem to have much um, bearing on the plot, but uh, I don't know, maybe it explains how, uh, <clears throat> how, yeah, why there's an evil kingdom of, uh, yeah, evil kingdom of mice. Um, so, let's see, uh, so yeah, the story really gets started when, uh, Clara's, uh, uncle, uh, Drosselmeyer, uh, gives her, like, this Nutcracker doll, and, uh, you know, um, let's see, she goes to sleep, so, yeah, we don't get anything with the Ragman, I, yeah, they, yeah, no, yeah, there's no further mention of the Ragman, um, so yeah, uh, she suddenly wakes up in the middle of the night to find uh, a bunch of, uh, yeah, mice, right, not, uh, her, yeah, mice carrying her doll, yeah, Nutcracker doll away, um, so they're mice, and yet, uh, yeah, they work for the Rat Queen. Well, anyway, yeah, there's this two-headed Rat Queen who, uh, yeah, well, suddenly the Nutcracker comes to life and starts fighting the mice. You know, recapping this story, it's, uh, pretty weird. I mean, I mean, I already knew this movie was weird, but yeah, there's quite a few, uh, yeah, plot lines in this story that, uh, yeah, weird, but, uh, whatever, um, she wakes up and she finds the Nutcracker is gone, and then she, like, gets sick, um, and then she, uh, suddenly finds herself outside, uh, Uncle Drosselmeyer's grandfather clock, and then she goes into the clock, and then she's in, uh, yeah, she's in uh, Nutcracker land, you know. You know, the land that she goes to in all the versions of the story. Um, and, uh, you know, there she meets the king who um, whose daughter has been turned into a rat by the Rat Queen. And, uh, yeah, they're trying... They want to... Br or the only way uh, she'll... 
change back is if either she agrees to marry the Rat Queen's son, or if, um, or yeah, but, uh, yeah, I guess what they ultimately de decide to do to break the curse is, uh, destroy the Queen's heart, which is outside her body, and it's protected by a walnut shell that's like, or yeah, that's as durable as steel for some reason. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, I didn't really question much of it when I watched it, but yeah, recapping it, uh, really weird plot. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the humanized Nutcracker, um, his name is Franz, he, uh, sends his, uh, toy soldiers in to fight the mice, and, uh, so, yeah, they fight, and, you know, he manages to destroy the heart, and the queen dies, and then she, but while she dies, she curses him, and turns him into a nut cracker doll like the one that the girl got um and then Clara has to find a way to change him back oh yeah also uh yeah the princess by the way the princess looks just like Clara but uh yeah she turns back into a human um and she reject yeah she rejects the nutcracker because she, she doesn't want to marry a doll so yeah I guess they're playing her up as a stuck-up, you know, uh, brat. That's the word I'm going to use to censor myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, then Clara tries to find out how to change him back, and she she goes on this trippy adventure um, where she finds out that... Uh, yeah, in order to change him back, it, she has to, uh, yeah, she has to make a sacrifice, and yeah, ult she ends up making the ultimate sacrifice when the Rat Queen's son comes in and uh, tries to destroy the doll. So yeah, she gets in his way, and uh, he stabs her. So yeah, we watch a little girl get stabbed. Um... And then that's the point where she wakes up, and, uh, and yeah, we got that, uh, waking up from, or yeah, it's like, it was a dream, or was it, moment. Um, so yeah, her aunt and uncle are there, and, uh, yeah, then, uh, her, I guess, uh, this guy she's in love with or something comes in, and, uh, yeah, obviously he looks just like the Nutcracker as a human, and uh, and yeah, they basically hook up, which is um, has some weird implications since she looks like a nine-year-old girl or something, and he looks like a fully grown man or at least a mature teenager. Yeah, I'm not sure how old Claire is supposed to be, but uh, yeah, she looks much younger than he does, so yeah, implications and stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess back in them olden days, um, it was legal to marry 12-year-old girls. Maybe that's how old she is, I don't know. Alright, well, I'm not gonna say any more about that, but, uh, overall this was a weird story, um... You know, it was very trippy. Honestly, I think this is, movie is very comparable to that Raggedy Ann and Andy movie um, that I reviewed not too long ago. Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's very trippy, obviously, but, yeah, not quite as trippy as Raggedy Ann and Andy, but still. Um, yeah, still very weird plot line. It doesn't really have that much of a focus, it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty unfocused story, um, and, uh, but the animation is nice, it's, uh, well presented, um, there are some memorable characters you meet along the way, I guess, um, 
you know, there's talented voice actors, you know, um, so Clara is apparently voiced by, um, or yeah, she's voiced by Melissa Gilbert, who I looked up and I saw that, uh, she was, uh, I guess one of the girls from Little House on the Prairie. I don't know much of anything about that show, even though I see my mom watching it all the time. Yeah, I know next to nothing about it, but apparently she was one of, yeah, one of the girls in that show. I don't know if she's like the girl or, I don't know. But uh, she's also, um, yeah, she was also the voice of Batgirl in the uh, Batman animated series. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, and, you know, we also have, um, Roddy McDowell as, uh, you know, Franz slash, slash Fritz, the, uh, nutcracker slash dude that the girl has a crush on. So, yeah, we got a young girl in love with this young adult man voiced by a 50-something-year-old. Um, that's the implication, at least. Um... You know, uh, Dick Van Patten is the king, um, and then we got, uh, the late, great Christopher Lee as, uh, Uncle Drosselmeyer slash street singer, puppeteer, watchmaker, so, yeah, he appears as various characters in this movie, and, yeah, he's always, he's always excellent. I mean, it's hard not to, uh, appreciate, uh, great sorry um it's hard not to appreciate um the man's performance and uh yeah he's always great that's pretty much how i sum up christopher lee <clears throat> and i have to speak a little louder because somebody is playing music downstairs and i do don't want this video to get flagged for copyrighted um music playing in the background um Ava Gabor is in this movie, too. She's a fortune teller character called the Queen of Time. And yeah, there's like an interest... Like, I guess the Queen of Time is like a puppet that they show... Um, it's like they show her moving live-action puppetry, unlike the other characters that are animated in stop-motion, blah, blah, blah. Um, because um, she doesn't move her mouth because Gabor... Or, yeah, her voice is, like, um, telepathic, I guess. Um, but, yeah, Gabor does a good job as her. An interesting uh, departure from her uh, Disney works of playing uh, flirty, furry ladies who, uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, i got to keep talking here. Um, but, yeah, it's, yeah, the voice act all do a great job some great actors cast for this movie um yeah even the young girl i mean she obviously had some acting experience um so yeah um good performances good uh, animation and presentation just kind of an unfocused and rather weird story it's um so yeah, the movie's got some problems, but uh, you know, it's it's an interesting one. So yeah, I'd say my thoughts on it are very similar to the Raggedy Ann and Andy movie in that, you know, both movies are very flawed, but um, still the presentation is interesting enough that I'm willing to give both of them a 7 out of 10, and that's what I'm giving this one. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, I, I guess I would recommend it. Just, uh, keep in mind what I've, uh, <clears throat> what I've been talking about. Um, and, uh, yeah, if there's anything else I feel I need to add, I'll put it in the comments. And, uh, yeah, I better go ahead and end this video now. So that, that'll be it for now. Mash it and smash it, signing off.